Some kind of country. Just breathtaking. Just another day at your office here. Yeah. Now that is a pretty sight, isn't it? Lyle's a pro. Easy to work with. A lot of latitude for me as the hunter to have the freedom to engage in the hunt the way I wanted to. And he's a real cowboy. You know, he's been on the rodeo circuit, rode 13 years, and the way he has set up his lodge and his operation certainly focuses on that western theme. And so hunting with Lyle was a lot of fun because of just how easy he was to work with. Yeah, boy. You'll turn me into a cowboy yet, won't you, Lyle? <laughs> You're doing a good job of it. It's getting towards the end of breeding season and a lot of the big bulls were getting whipped out, uh, some of the smaller ones, and when they start doing that, they don't go back in the herd to breed any cows, so you want to call them out. And that's the best way to do that is right in the middle of breeding season or toward the end. You know what bulls are not doing your herd any justice. So what we were doing is we were looking for bulls that were three, four miles from the herd because we knew that they weren't breeding any buffalo. On their tribal land, the Lakota let the buffalo live as naturally as they can. They eat grass and not grain. They move in the open country freely. And this means that to find them, you must hunt them. Just to get sort of tuned up for the bison hunt, we found a youngish bull that we knew we weren't gonna take, but it was fun just to get up on him, do a little belly crawling, and try and get as close as you could. And as soon as he was aware of us, it was just boom, he was off and started off almost like a mule deer. You know, I've never seen an animal that size do something like that. But you watch these animals and they're so incredibly agile and they're amazingly fast for an animal that size. So it's impressive to watch these animals. God, hard to imagine 60 million of those things running around, isn't it? Take some feed, what's that? Look at that, as far as you can see, nothing but bison. Quite a critter. Very nice. The bison hunt goes on in the hoof prints of Lakota, Lewis and Clark and the old buffalo hunters. And then we got some tracks of different things coming through here. They're all pretty fresh. Federal Cartridge President Mark DeYoung. The gun we're gonna be shooting with is a Stoger replica of the Sharps, and it's in a 4570, which is still produced today for government caliber, that traditional caliber. Uh, this is the cartridge right here. It's a 300 grain hot core spear bullet in a federal load. It's gonna be fun because we have open sights. You look at the trajectory, you can be right on at 100 yards and you're gonna lose about nine by the time you get to 200 yards. So we'll wanna be 100 yards or closer uh, to that big buffalo when we take the shot. If we get up here just a little ways, we'll get on top of that hill. We should be able to see him hopefully. Sure. I'm not a buffalo judge, Lyle. It looked good to me. All right, let's go try. We found a couple of bulls, and like hunting anything else, whether it's a whitetail or a mule deer or an elk, once you spy these bison, they're much more tuned in than some people might think. And they were aware of us right away. And spooked at a great distance, ran off. What do you think? I'm gonna try and get up ahead? We tracked them for a little bit and followed them, and we rode up three finger draws. They all come out at the top of a hill, and we figured we could get ahead of them, so we tied our horses up in a draw, and we walked for about a quarter of a mile. So this draw just kind of continues on up here, hits ahead? Yeah, and it yeah. should come, it, it kind of cuts right back around over on top of this. We yeah. should be able to cut them off, hopefully. I'm pretty sure they're gonna come up this way. It's kind of the nice part of hunting the hill country is it provides the game cover, but it provides the hunter an opportunity to create a stock and get in the right position. And we were able to go over the hill, able to crawl up to the top, belly crawl down to where we were comfortable with the shot, spot the game, a couple of nice bulls as they turned out. I think that one to the right's bigger. But boy, that other one's giving a guy a good shot. It's a real good shot on the left, but if we need to wait for the one on the right, he's going to have to stand up, because I can't take a shot if I'm standing up. Go ahead and get ready with your shot. Bison raised for meat tend to trade body size for horn size. The bigger the body, the smaller the horns. Wild bison have the best horns, but no bison's petite. That one on the left is a monster. He looks like just a beast. Sneak up there. He's a smaller of the two, but 
that's a good shot right there. Boy, if you can get that one to the left, Gosh. take him right away. He is a beast. Got him. He's getting up. Shoot him. Right there he is. Good shot. That's a little one. It's a small one. Let's go down here. <laughs> right, right there. Yep. Right there. There's a good shot. Got him. There he goes. There he goes. Oh. There he goes. God, the shot felt good. <laughs> Did you get a look at him? Yeah, it sounded really good. I think you hit him right behind the shoulder. So he's got to be in here. Got, should be in the tree. So. Right there. Is that him? Yep, yep. He's got down, him, right? Good shot. All right. Great. Thanks, Lyle. <laughs> God, look at the size of that thing. Boy, he's just oh, my Lord. amazing. Look at the, the mop on him. Just unreal. Yeah, he's kaput. Let me get this gun safe. God, look at the size of that. I mean, that's got to be all of a ton, huh? Very, Maybe more? Yeah, possibly more. Look at these horns. You couldn't even see the horns that well just because of all that hair. He's got that fro going on. That was an excellent shot. Hey, pal. Thanks, Thanks. Thanks Emil. That was great fun. Very that good. was a lot more adventure than I thought it was going to be, quite frankly. You talk yeah. about stunning country, too. I just can't even imagine what this place must have been like with a million bison walking around. Had to be I mean, really it had neat. to be just awe-inspiring. Oh, what a beast. That's a great shot. Thank you, old man. Historically, the buffalo, what they've done is they clothed us and they fed us and took care of us, provided shelter. And if you look at that aspect in today's world where, you know, through the slaughtering of buffalo and selling the meat and the money comes from them sales, you know, does clothe and feed some of our people and shelters them. And... So what's he doing here? Well, he'll smudge the animal. It's showing respect to the buffalo and a, more of a blessing to it. So anything that's shot on tribal land. I think hunters go through a evolution in their hunt. And we begin first by wanting to get our limit. And then we move into a trophy phase where we want to get a trophy and we want to get bragging rights. And then I think you move into a phase where it's more about the total experience and being able to get out in the field as much as it is the harvest. And for me, it's getting out in the field now. And the harvest really is secondary in terms of the enjoyment I have of just the pursuit and applying your skills, being in the field, and uh, executing a successful hunt. Hunting is a very personal thing. You know, when you do something like this, you have to fully understand what it is you're doing and appreciate what it is you're doing. When you consider what was once and what is today, I mean, it's obviously a fraction of what it used to be, so you're trying to connect in some way with history. And to step back and be a part of that was really just a, a real memorable experience. The sun will not be going down again on the American Buffalo.